Now, once you get the invite, that starts a whole slew of work you have to do. There are tasks that they will send you, heavily in medical, especially for me because I'm older and they probably asked a few extra things of me. You send in fingerprint cards, statements saying they can do a background check on you. You have to put in for a government passport and send them some pictures. You have to copy your passport if you have and send it to them. You have to send in more pictures for the country visa, a physical with your doctor for countries with malaria. All the vaccines that you should have had growing up, as well as a few extra ones like yellow fever. You have to go through hepatitis A and B and you have to make sure your rubella and your mumps and your chicken pox was all taken care of either when you were a child or now. Get proof that you've had the COVID one and two shots as well as any boosters and now there's yet a fourth shot that handles the variants of COVID, you have to send that in. I had to have an EKG done, three different blood draws. I've had a couple teeth pulled. I've had a filling filled. With my PCL on my right knee, I had to get the reports from when I first had it diagnosed and an MRI done. Then I had to go back to my, an orthopedic surgeon and have them clear me of anything and that I was good to go. I had to send in dental x-rays, the actual digital files. I had to write up a, an attestment of childhood immunizations. You have to get an eyeglass replacement, bunch of forums. So Shakespeare may have been the first one to say this or have this concept, and that's the idea of putting the horse before the cart, or is it the cart before the horse? The cart before the horse. <laughs> when is the horse actually in front of the cart? <sighs> and is it attached? And is it ready to go? This whole process of giving them the information they need so that you can go, um, you're always wondering if something could fall through the cracks and they will just reject you. So they may decide there's a condition they can't support. They don't have uh, electricity or refrigeration for something I may have to take medication-wise. Now, that doesn't mean that if you have a disability or complication with your eyesight or your hearing or your ability to move, there might be other places, and they want to make sure that you can handle whatever that country will throw at you. And if you do have other issues, they can put you somewhere else, perhaps. We are off to the doctor's office to get another blood test. All right, get in. So I've been down for a long weekend and uh, went to a football game, me by you. They won, but no, we're, uh, it's Monday morning. Oh, I think Copper wants the window open. I'm gonna try and also hit the dentist's office and talk to the dentist about what they want. That wasn't so bad. Hopefully the results come back better than the first time or consistent with the first time. So we're at the dentist, but we're gonna let Copper go to the bathroom while she can. All right, now we're gonna have to come back and clean that up. Their dentist wants me to take out two more teeth or something, oh. which doesn't make any sense. I just don't think they read the, the email that said, 
all the treatment was done. There's a million things that could keep me from going on this thing, right? Oh. Mm. Especially when you're older. And the yeah. last thing I want is for them to say, oh, no, no, you can't go because you have bad teeth. And it's like, no, I don't. I, I, and I have so few left. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to pull any more, please. It's so, it's so subjective because if they're going to call this, like, has to be treated, then, like, they would see these little shadows on the amalgams and say, those have to all be treated. With, like, uh, and I just don't yeah. feel just like it's necessary. Sure. Yeah. But at the same time, if there was a tooth there that they said that I should pull, I'll, I'll have it pulled just so I know. <laughs> just so you can go. <laughs> All right. Well, that should do that at the dentist. And uh, let's go pick up Copper's doo doo. <sighs> I am so happy we don't have to have more teeth pulled. <laughs> but like I told them, absolutely take them all. If that's what it means to go. How you doing? Yeah, I love you too. If I get to go to Madagascar and have this great adventure and learn this language and serve these people, what a great win that is. Now, if I don't get it, that's also a win because I won't have to go to a difficult place with uh, no electricity, no running water, have to learn a new language and live in a, a third world country. Either way, it's a win-win situation. It's a good way of, of, of keeping your, your, your perspective. Um, it may not break your heart if you realize that, look, it's gonna be good no matter what happens. If I get to go, great. If I don't get to go, So I'm just about ready to go on line for a new Zoom meeting. Welcome everyone to this call. The team in Madagascar is very excited to meet you as you're just about to hear. And this is the first opportunity that they have to start getting to know you. They will also use it to match you with your sites. So I'm Brett Coleman. I've been the country director here in Madagascar for a little over three years. Um, I really can't begin to tell you how excited we are at the prospect of your arriving and helping us to rebuild our operations of Peace Corps Madagascar. As I'm sure you know, uh, Peace, the Peace Corps evacuated all Peace Corps volunteers worldwide in March 2020. I have another photo to show some of the healthcare will be the reality. And it's very less, um, the equipment is really uh, la less and low. Here is some um, her community health center, but this is uh, compared to the previous photo. This is uh, in the big town, a regional hospital, which is one of the reg regional hospital in the, the southeast. On the left uh, side of the photo, we have the emergency room. As you can see, the equipment inside is really basic. And uh, we have ambulance. Sometimes they work, sometimes they, are, they doesn't work. They didn't work. Most of you will be the only American that your community members know. So the reputation of the Peace Corps and even of the United States will depend a lot on what you do and how you behave. Uh, I mentioned in my opening remarks that Peace Corps is beloved in Madagascar. And that is because of the good work and the good behavior demonstrated by Peace Corps volunteers who've come before you. We are here at the doctor's office for one, hopefully last visit, to discuss my pre-diabetes condition, hopefully lack of thereof. I'm not overly worried about it, but maybe I should be. I, I just don't want them to say, oh, you're, you got a condition that we can't support. Sometimes with those labs, when they're slightly out of the range of normal, it can just represent that, that that's, that's normal for this person. Because right. a lab derives its normal range based on it's a statistic distribution of, of all the patients that they're getting the blood tests on. Generally speaking, with all the records and everything you have of mine, I'm good to go for the most part, yeah. right? I don't see anything that just says to me, oh yeah, you don't want to send this guy overseas with right. problem X. Or right. Whatever. So 
you know, just start taking that. It's one tablet at night. All right. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully that's all done with all the yeah. rigmarole. Okay. All right. Hopefully we, you won't hear from me for a couple years. All right. So that should cover it. Hopefully I won't be back here for a couple of years. Yeah, good luck with that one. All right. We are off to get a, another blood test. Third time's the charm, right? This is nowhere near the snow up on the mountain. Well, turns out that the last blood test I did wasn't, didn't cover CBC and it's too late. So I'm going back for a third. It actually isn't so bad. I mean, it's sharp pinch. Every vein's a little, there's similarities, but there are always a little, some differences. Hopefully the last blood test I need for a while. So on, on this x-ray here, this, this cavity is real small. Mm -hmm. It's debatable whether you can even call it a cavity right. or not. Right. So I have no reservations about you going and doing your thing the way your tooth is, because we'd normally just watch that. But um, to not, you know, get in a fight with these, we'll, yeah. get, we'll just get taken care yeah, of. Yeah, we'll do that. Does that sound fair? Yeah. Okay, awesome. So we are done at the dentist. <laughs> I still have a little bit of a numbing on the tooth. So I am here for another blood draw. I still have numbing in my mouth from the tooth. <laughs> yes, hopefully this will be my last. All right, fourth time's a charm. <laughs> so I was told that these tests would determine uh, more cholesterol diabetic issues as well as thyroid. Um, I'm not sure why anybody would be worried about my thyroid, but maybe it could be a complication due to my low red blood cells or whatever. All right, moving on. care about uh, social media or I'm not trying to get likes or um, you know show people what an amazing life I have um, I, although I do but I, I don't need to advertise that but I did post on Facebook that I was joining the Peace Corps uh, that I had gotten invited and I'd be leaving in February and what will happen is that people will just think you're a wonderful person for signing up for the Peace Corps. You'll get all of this um, um, appreciation and people saying nice things about you. But the bottom line is you haven't done anything yet. So it, it, I, I feel uncomfortable sometimes when people are just, you know, think you're a good person. Um, whether you are or you aren't, you haven't, haven't actually gone anywhere, you haven't done anything, and yet people um, love that you've at least um, applied and you'd like to do that, and hopefully you will do that. It's, it's a great way to get, you know, boost your ego without doing anything. So the last couple days have been a little bit worrisome. I had a, my fourth blood draw uh, last week and got the results, I believe, on Monday or Tuesday. Monday. And sent them in. This was the very last task that I had to get, and it was about TSH levels, um, a lipids panel, as well as a uh, A1C something 
and uh, some of those results were a little bit high. So reluctantly, I did send them in, and uh, I heard back today, and this is the message that I received. I was hoping to film this as I read it, but um, so the Office of Medical Services, they start out by saying, hi, Rick. This is just to let you know that the advisors gave the green light for your clearance. 